Welcome to Leaders for Pets. My name is Kirsty. I'm Phil. And today you join us for the good, the bad, and the ugly of Cooper Island. Cooper Island people, island with Coopers. Actually, it's not just Cooper Island because it's been out for three years. What's the What's the point of just talking about Cooper Island? Right, we've also got the uh, the skilled workers expansion, uh, which is five of these really thin bits of card. I like. We'll talk about that in a bit. I might call it a promo if I was less charitable. But it's called, it's described as an expansion, so we'll, we'll be giving it some thought as well. So, let's find out a little bit more about the game. Yeah, so in Cooper Island, you are um, explorers exploring an island and building your little mini peninsula into your own version of a wonderful, wonderful paradise. Because your dog took you there. Yeah, um, dogs know the best. <laughs> dogs know the best. This game is designed by Oud, by the way. Yes, and uh, distributed by uh, Frosted Games and Capstone Games. Yep. So, Artwork then. by Javier Inkcolum. Fine, because he's been learning names mm -hmm. and it shows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's for two to four players. It can take up to about three hours. It's not a quickie. It's not a short game. However, we can get it now. We're much quicker than that nowadays. Yeah, we us. yeah we can get it finished in about an five hour? hours. Oh, sorry, an hour, hour and a half maybe. Less than that. Less than that. If we're mm -hmm. speed playing. Yeah. Now, um, let's go down to the table just down here, and I'll give you a very brief explanation of how Cooper Island works, and then we'll talk about our good, the bad, and our uglies for the game. Okay, so. We're in mid-game here, and what you see in front of you is a game set up for two players. Um, you have a central island board, and there's little tiles that slot in and slot out, allowing you to add peninsulas for up to four players. It's a really cute design, um, and, and means it's very adaptable. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the outside of this track is where your ships are going to navigate, stopping at any island spaces they, they see. Dictated by the large double hexagons. Or just not the, the just, island. Just the island. Yeah, but you go from one to the next yeah. to the next. Island hopping, some might say, yes. or sandbank hopping. Yeah. Um, maybe you're just crashing all the way. You're a really <laughs> bad <adrift>. ship pilot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> so um, every time you stop where there's another icon, you're going to get a benefit. So that's quite nice. And the game will score points based on how far around the, the island you've got in your boats. However, if I was to go there, I'd get no benefit. No, because nothing's been built there yet. Exactly. Um, so you're going to score points for how far you get around the board, and each stopping space is going to be worth one victory point at the end of the game. There are other victory points in the game. We're going to talk about victory points a little bit later on in depth, I suspect, um, yes. so we'll not overkill it here. Um, other things that you've got to do. There are some objectives that you'll need to sacrifice a worker to have the opportunity to score. Uh, there are ships to deliver cargo to that are taking the cargo back overseas, um, apparently the only cargo of any value is cloth and gold, but that's fine too. Um, there are buildings to be built, and they'll be built on your island, like my little red buildings here. And, oh, you've not built any buildings. Oh, you've built statues. statues. You can take ruins and build statues. Um, glorified island. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to be building your landscape up, tiered. So you're going to be laying yeah. tiles and building your landscape high. And that what that means is any resource cube you place on is going to be worth the height. Mm -hmm. So this food is only worth one. If it was here, it would be worth two food. And if it was on my stack, it would be worth three. Yes. And that's how you're going to gain resources to allow you to build structures and upgrade, bring these. These are income ships. These are ships that just sail in. Um, so these income ships um, are regular income in one of the five rounds. There are only five rounds in the game. Bear in mind, there are six ships six uh, island inlet tiles to place, and yet five rounds. So you always Just keep that in mind, five rounds. You're always going to miss out at least one ship and one inlet. That's mm -hmm. fine because there's plenty to be going on with. Mm -hmm. um, so on your turn, you will start off with an income phase where you're going to initially place one of these inlet tiles and also then have the opportunity to place a normal landscape tile and place the relevant cubes on it. Whenever you place one of these um, inlet tiles, you'll also immediately get the benefit. You'll get to take the benefit again of any inlets your ship passes on its journey, and that includes your opposing player's mm -hmm. inlets if you get that far around. My, my boat has an opportunity potentially of getting there, so we'll, we'll see if I get Especially that done. Especially the next place. 
Yeah. <laughs> That was thought through. Yes. Um, the same with these. These are incomes every, every round, as I said, but also when you place them for the first time, you'll get the immediate benefit. So on your turn, you're going to take your income, which starts off as just play an inlet tile and a landscape tile. After that, you're going to place your workers, and you start the game with two workers, and placing one of these worker placement slots. There are eight of those, and there are two different shape slots. There's the circular slots and also square slots, which give you actions at a benefit or a discount. So these are for regular workers, and Special. the square ones are commonly named... Special ones. Which becomes I mean, guild oh. workers with the new expansion. Yeah, well... Actually, no, yeah. they're not. One of the round ones and one of the square ones is skilled. So, you take your income, you then place your two workers in one of these slots. If I was there and Kirsty wanted to go there, she would need to pay me a resource to do so. Of my choosing, not his, bear yeah. in mind. And I still have, have capacity to store that, of which at the start of the game you only have five spaces to store any goods. So. However, if it was Phil needing to give it to me, as you can see, my board is currently full. So, so I would just put would it just into the waste. Um, <laughs> the waste pile. So The resource pile. The resource pile. So um, you're going to place your workers. As you place your workers, you're going to have the opportunity to take the actions depicted in each of the sections. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, play a tile, take a tile, play a tile, take two tiles or place two tiles. These little things are your cartographer tracks, which are like um, in between points that can be spent to do useful things on yes. your land. And leveling there's the land. Leveling the land, raising the land. Um, yeah. There's building buildings, there's creating income ships, there's um, delivering cargo to one of these cargo ships, and there is creating statues from ruins. So yes. everything you'd want to do on, a, on an island of your choosing. Now, as the game progresses, you will hopefully unlock another worker, maybe two. And at some point, you might want to unlock one of these square workers, which go into the square slots here, which give you additional benefits mm -hmm. when you place them. However, when you do unlock one of these, you have to sacrifice a, a circular worker that isn't placed on the board yet, um, and then you get to choose one of these objectives to pursue. And that's tricky, because we've just played around, and I frustratingly forgot that, and I could have actually taken a square, except my two circles were on the board. Yes. Unlucky. Um, <laughs> the game ends at five rounds, and mm -hmm. we total up victory points based on how far our boats have got around, as we've said. Uh, there might be in some of these buildings there are end game victory points. Have you scored any of the objectives and got a worker on them? That's important. And then you'll add those all together, and at the end of the game you will have a total. Let's not talk about what that total might be. No, just no, yet. that's not. <laughs> that's roughly, in a nutshell, how to play Cooper Island. There are hundreds of you know there are some good how to play guides out there. If you want more yeah. detailed explanation, go find one of those. Um, in the meantime, let's talk about our good, the bad, and the ugly. So, Kirsty, over to you. What are your goods? So, hmm. the goods about this game for me, uh, it's a tricksy, thinky, complicated in a level that there's not that many options of what to do but it's actually the the rounds are so tight that you want to be as efficient as possible so even from the first round you're thinking right okay am I getting coins to be able to put boats out am I going to get resources to be able to put buildings out am I going to try and push my cartographer track up so that I can build and try and create you know, as large kind of flex your muscle a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it's it's re one of those that you know. Well, it's either that or that on this round. You can't do both. No, and no. It's, and it's not even like there's a gentle break in. It instantly feels like that, <laughs> which in some ways is good. Yeah, that's. I'll, I'll take it. It's good for now. It's good, okay. and it's. Um, I. <clears throat> What another thing I enjoy about this game is I find the cartographer track is very on theme mm -hmm. of the game. You're navigating uh, islands, you're, you're mapping, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The other thing I like is um, one of the things we've mentioned is the stackability of resources. Rather than you having to go, right, I've got like three resources there, very much similar to how Acropolis is, um, it's one on there times the number, which means there's three. 
Yeah. I like that it's not, you know, too Worth resource saying, heavy. If you do have to take one of those resources off because you want to build yeah. on top of it, that resource cube goes from being worth three or four to being worth one. One. <laughs> so <Ouch>. you want <laughs> to use them prop appropriately yes. to build with, not um, just to move it to your player board. No, no. Um, so for me, those are my goods. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So my goods. Uh, this game is... A real challenge. It's a real think, think again. It's a bit overrated, maybe as a term, but the game asks you to make tough decisions constantly, and mm. I do mean constantly. Because I already said it, there's no easy choices in the game. There's no obvious strategy at the moment, and we've played it a few, fair few times now. Mm. There's no obvious strategy. Now, what the game does do is it forces you into tough decisions. It interlinks a lot of activity, so a lot of the things require you to have done something else first. Yeah. And if you haven't done that, you know, we'll do X, Y, and Z. And that produces a resource management game that I think is as good as a resource management game gets. It's yeah. really challenging to have. You never have enough, which I think is the essence of a good resource management game. If you have mm -hmm. a glut of resources in resource management games, they become too easy. So... The resources here are challenging, they're really hard to manage, you don't get a lot, and you need to really be sensible and drive your own strategy based on what you're spending those resources on. So from my perspective, one of the great things about this is it's a real tough game that asks you to manage resources in a way a lot of other Euro games don't in keeping them tighter than I think I've ever seen in a mm. Euro game. So that's one of my goods. The other good is actually... Once you've got the flow of this game, it's a pretty straight, mechanically, mm. as in how to take your action, yeah. is pretty straightforward. That's never going to cause a blockage to people's thinking. No. What is going to cause a blockage to people's thinking is how to interact with the game in the most efficient, you've used yes. that word a lot, yeah. most efficient way. Um, so yes, it's a, it's a good mechanical game. There's a lot of good mechanics in there. There's a great resource management element, which is as tight as you ever want resource management to be. They're my goods. It works. One thing I will mention is it works well as a two-player game. A lot of these sort of games are a bit like, I'll steal that from you, I'll steal from that. Whereas this works well as a two-player game. Yeah, a lot of two-player games um, feel bolt-on sometimes yeah. to a three, what is a three-player game in essence. And bearing in mind that on the box, it says 75 minutes to 150 minutes. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a long game. Like, bear in mind that we've just played three rounds in less than 40 minutes um, to kind of just get us to this point in time where you can see where the game is at. So, and we've got two rounds left. And already I know I'm not going to get that many more points. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's that stage where... It's not, it doesn't have to be a really long thinky, you know, there's no AP, but that's Ooh, between us. Yeah, there's no between AP us. for us. I no, think it's cool. It has been with others. There could be, people for us, could suffer. It's a, it's a yeah. quick game for us to play. It is, it is. So that's our goods. Mm -hmm. How about our bads? Mm. Okay. So. Huh. I have a couple of bads and I'm not sure whether it's me personally, but for me, there's a bit of a lacklustre of story in this in this game for me. Um, there is a, a little like little paragraph in the book which tells you about how you it's the seventeen. Dog, dog, finds, dog finds island, yeah. you go back to island, back to island. and develop it into a beautiful yes. hotel resort. But nothing of that comes across from any of the actions in the game. No. Yes, you are gaining resources. You're, you know, you're building woods for wood. You are putting mountains in for stone. I'm fairly sure they'd already be there. Um, you know, you're you're putting fields to create food. Yes, that sort of makes it, you know, in settlements. And, but it doesn't feel like there's an, any events that would happen as people live and as you're doing yeah. that, you know. For me, I really, I struggled. What it is, I struggle to connect with this game. 
And it's not that I find it too hard. It's not that there's not enough resources. I love that side of complicated games. It's I struggle to connect with it and have an emotional connection to it. Yep, that's fine. And that is bang on why I struggle with this one. Um, another one of my bads um, would be, so obviously the, the lack of theme in some ways just doesn't, it, like where you're getting your navigation points from doesn't quite feel right. I don't know. So you build a statue and that means you can move a boat on. How does building a statue move a boat <laughs> on? You know, if you're... You build a house, you build a boat You know, boat if, you're, if you're chopping down wood and you're building a boat with that wood and then yeah. you're, you know, it, it just... There's a slight break for me. Um, and although if you ask anybody what my favourite colours are, they are like these teal, excluding cosmic colours, they are these kind of teal, sea-like colours. For me, the box art and the artwork just just feels a little down for drab. me. Dra yeah, drab. I mean, there's colour there, and I know that it's set in a certain time, but for me, it just feels a little bit low. I don't know, okay. it just, I feel just like it needs a little bit of a magic wand waving over it. I don't know. And that's just my personal taste that, you know, it's not saying that it doesn't, you know, it's not right. It's just my, per I struggle to personally connect with the artwork and the theme of the game. So that's my bad. Yeah, I think for me, the, 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 and it's not a bad for me. It's not a reason I wouldn't buy the game, but it's definitely a, it's definitely a, a minimal setting, I would mm. say. And uh, there are things that are linked clearly to the setting like you're building buildings you're you're developing the inland of this peninsula the first player token is cooper the first player token is that's cooper. the only link to cooper bearing in mind he's discovered this he's leading he's led the navigation and you know he's anyway it's not there. someone someone's <laughs> frustrated with the lack of, of theme and story in this game i'm not so i'm not so frustrated but it is definitely lacking it's uh bolted on it's it's a bit more than pasted on um so there is there are definitely mm. things that are happening that make a little bit of sense but it's not a direct from a rules perspective and using the the game setting to enhance the rules this isn't doing that mm. it is a nice enough setting some of the stuff doesn't make sense within the setting because I already mentioned moving the ships on. But for me, that's probably more of an ugly for me than a bad. Okay. There are a few bads. Um, and one is the flimsiness of the player boards, which I think you'll that's talk about my, yeah, later. That's, that's one of my ugliest. Um, I think the other thing for me on the bads, and it, it it's hard to say it and not sound bitter and slightly resentful of the game this game's mean <laughs> like it's really really yes. mean like if you are used to um complex modern euros and i'll use a game like coffee traders as an mm -hmm. example and um, because coffee traders is another uh, resource management game it's also by uh, it's, also, it's also by Catson games so let's, let's put them on both together um in coffee traders you have got Resources coming in, you're mm -hmm. able to do things with them. The game feels pretty much constantly generous. You always have the opportunity to do some of the things you want to do without having to push too hard. Yeah. This doesn't do that. No. This game is for those people who like mean games, who like a game that says, no, you can't do that. Oh, you want to do that? No. No, you can't do that. No. Sorry. <laughs> no. That's if not happening today. That, no. no. You can choose one thing and one thing only. Um, Two turns ago, you didn't do this, so now you can't do that. Yeah. Um, and that level of forward planning is interesting. I think mm -hmm. very interesting. However, games like Coffee Traders, like Pure Steam, which we reviewed as well, yeah. um, they do it in a very different way. They give you things, and they allow the they don't they don't overly tighten your decision making based on what yeah. you've done previously they keep broadly your decisions a bit more open the parameters cooper are not island as tight. yeah cooper island narrows really does mm. narrow your decisions based on what you've done previously for example these boats um, that are in the game that you deliver goods to they free up you probably can't even see i can't even hold on to it these little cargo tokens now if you decide to not fill, fulfill at least one of those, 
you're basically playing the game handicapped because this gives Welcome you my game yeah, <laughs> this gives you free resources when you use it and then you have to buy it back unless you bought the hideously expensive fortress yep which i have done previously and yet still not got the ability to use it so let me let me give an example of of what i think could have been slightly different within cooper island to just give it a little bit of greater sense of generosity we're in we're start about to start turn four of five turns remember turn four of five turns and we have got one yep. extra worker each. Yeah, the, I'd just like to point out that this game is the first time I have ever been able to get another worker out. And I've tried damn hard previously. So I got this worker out in round two, and that felt good. The very first time I played the game, my extra worker came in round four. Yeah. Um, that's how mean the game is. And if you don't like that in a game, don't buy this game. No. Don't buy the expansion because it does nothing to change that. And we'll talk about the expansion in a moment. Yeah. Now, if you don't like that meanness, if you don't like that tightness, because one of the things that could have been changed with the Cooper Island is making access to new workers more generous. Mm -hmm. And that would give you more opportunity and accelerate the game a little bit. But the fact that you can't, it's almost impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very difficult to get an extra worker in turn one because I have tried um, it's difficult to do. I think when we were talking a few moments ago and, and the rule whereby I'd already played two of my workers... And you wanted a square worker. And I wanted a square worker. The fact that you cannot take a previously played worker to swap that, bearing in mind you are permanently losing that worker anyway, you have to structure your go in such a way that you are foregoing that worker's but Phil, ability. But, Phil, that's the essence of all good Euro games doesn't have to be it and it isn't be. true no um, panzer teutonica gives you more options yeah, yeah. It, it gives you and that's a fairly tight game it gives you a merchant as well as normal traders at the start and i feel that even if it was just that minor rule change even if it was in in house that you could take it from here i'm not saying for everyone i'm saying for the first one or i don't know that does something would just sit a little bit more comfortably i think so my my biggest reason to not buy this game is it's mean it's nasty mean. It's nasty mean. It picks on you. It bullies you. It makes you feel small. It does. It's mm. not generous in I'm how it plays. I'm already small enough as it is. So, and that is probably my biggest reason. Now, a lot of you will be sat there going, that sounds like a great reason to buy the game. <laughs> and if that, if that's how you're thinking now, go and buy Cooper Island. Yeah. Because that's a game. But make sure you've got the people to play it with. Yeah. Because this isn't this this is a game that requires the same three or four people around the table who are all happy with that as a concept. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to find yourself playing a solo mode that I don't think exists. No, no so, very much not. There are bads. How about the uglies? Mm. So for me. Um, there's two uglies, um, well, both of which Phil have very briefly mentioned. And obviously that was the fact that when we mentioned a moment ago, Hansa Teutonica gives you the, um, the, uh, I can't think of the word. The, the merchant the trader merchant, thing. The, uh, the, which is yeah. the round disc while all the rest of your discs are cubes. Sorry, discs, your pieces are cubes, which are normal traders. This game is so hard to get your special workers out. The fact that they're just calling them normal worker, special, special worker. worker. They could have come up with anything for that. That could have been a captain, could have been, you know, yeah. you could have had anything for that. Like, that's poor name choice. I'm sorry, but that's just lazy. But as we already said in the bads, it would be nice if that was a little bit more accessible, especially for the first one. Yeah, agreed. The other point for me, which... I know we're now in 2022 and this game came out in 2019, yeah, exactly. I think. But if you could just pass me the boards a minute. Yeah, I mean, player board. So this is the player board. This is not a card, a playing card. This is the player board. Now, for anyone who has watched uh, Good, the Bad and the Ugly of Boone Lake, you'll know that even that one that was stuck together, that was a pet hate of ours, was still triple if not quadruple the thickness of yeah. this player board. This is like almost the same thickness as the rule book. As a player board, 
especially from like a capstone games when you think of the, the quality of things like coffee traders imperial steam even boone lake had better quality yeah this this player board here is flimsy it's so flimsy and, and it, it is a it is a sneeze well. and you'll lose it yeah it's so easy to knock it didn't even need to be that it needed to be um recessed recessed i mean obviously that's nice they did it with Boone Lake. It wasn't ideal, but it worked better than this does. One person knocks the table, everything moves around because it is so lightweight. Everything moves. And I, mean, I don't know if you can see because you can't see from above, but I am moving that just slightly when someone gets up from the table to get a drink or something and all your pieces are sliding off the board. That's not how you want to play, especially, especially on this. You need the pieces to stay in the right place. That cartographer track. If you've only got two and then it gets knocked and I've got one or it gets knocked and it's, I suddenly got The cut off is critical, to be fair. You know, it can change a game. This, I'm sorry, was not good quality. I don't know who came up with the idea of this. And this being an expansion, being a flimsy piece, it's barely a piece of card, let alone a piece of paper. <laughs> it's, it's not, that's promo quality. And even then I've seen promos which are better quality. For me, they would have been better to invest a little bit more money on creating slightly better thickness of card. That's a big, big ugly for me because it does affect the gameplay. And it's one of the, th the reasons um, why we paid previously to upgrade a Great Western Trail because that is another game where your part's been in all the right places is crucial. Someone knocks the table, that's it. Messes everything up. And so we shouldn't have to end up buying Perspex boards to cover these boards when we're playing. I mean, how much did we pay for this game? Was it 60, 70 quid? Uh, no, not that much. I can't I think remember. It, it was around there at the time. Yeah, don't know. I, but I, it's, it's a reasonably expensive amount of money. Think about your price point when you're creating these. Because now it might be cheaper and now it might suit that. When people are paying and supporting that game, it needs to be better quality. It's not like anything else isn't. The board in the middle is, the tiles. These are really good thickness. I don't understand. Even these little journal things that virtually never get used. The anchors, which can be used but not very much, are like four times the thickness of something that's used on every game. <laughs> Just doesn't... It's, a, it's annoying. These cards are the same thickness. They're a playing card. It should be thicker than a playing card. So, Kirsty's made her point. <laughs> I feel... <laughs> So, yeah, so that's, it's okay. that's a massive ugly for me because of the way it does affect the gameplay. One knock of the table, everyone's pieces are moved. Okay, so my uglies. Mm -hmm. um, very simple, very straightforward. I've said the game's mean, my uglies reference the mean again. So a winning score in Boon, in Boon Lake, in Cooper Island, a winning score in Cooper Island is going to be around 25 points. If you're lucky. 25 points is a winning score in Cooper Island. Uh, you know, obviously, you can get slightly higher scores and win. You can get slightly lower scores and win. You can probably get a higher score and lose. Now, you have put, let's say, two hours of your life into mm -hmm. accumulating those 21, 22, 23 points, whatever mm -hmm. they might be. On average, mine's about 13, maybe 15. <laughs> ah, push. But you've spent a lot of time. You've spent a good two hours, like, honestly fighting for those and i guess yeah. thematically you might say well you're fighting with the interior of the island rah, 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 whatever it's not it doesn't need to be as tight as it does and i wouldn't mind tight if it delivered really yeah. tight endings of the game as well but the other part of my ugly for this is and it's, it's oddly it's becoming an ugly on, on for yeah. more than more than one game the ending of this game is a bit of an anticlimax. it's a damp squib I wouldn't quite go that far, but it is an anticlimax. Um, it does, it get, you get to the end of the game and the game stops and you total some points up. And yes, that happens in a lot of games. But a lot of games have got to that point, the last couple of rounds, mm. giving you some real acceleration and pace to gain and to scrabble for the extra points. In a game of Cooper Island, the last round feels very much like the second or third round yeah you've got a bit of efficiency on your board um you're probably focusing on one or two areas where yeah. you can gain the greatest leverage but you're not really you don't have the capacity to really accelerate at, at 
no. and like find point of strategy. There's no hidden points. There's no, it's, right, I'm going to pull this out and I've done this so I get these points. Everybody you know knows where the points are. It's not even from. that for me. It's the fact that it, it, it almost feels blunt all the way through. It feels yeah. like you've got a strategy, you've pursued it, and you should be able to hammer it and really mm. squeeze it out for like some really good points at the end of the game. And you just don't have yeah. that growth of capacity. You're still, you're still struggling in, in almost the same way you were struggling in yeah. round two. And you've not accelerated, you've not really grown. Your board's changed and you've got a lot of resources. And yeah, it's it, 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 for me, it means that I'll probably, you know, I'll play Cooper Island and it's one that won't necessarily leave the collection immediately. But it's also one where I think about a resource management worker placement game and I probably, Cooper Island probably sits quite, you know, a little bit mm. lower down on my list for heavy worker placement games, yeah. resource management games. Um, because it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't give you a sort of really buzzy, positive end. No. The, the beginning of the game and the mid game is really good. It Because it, 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 you, start, you start to feel things are starting yeah, to happen. You step up. But by the but end of the game, you, there's no more steps to be had. Just oh well, I don't need resources at the end of the game. I don't. I'm not going to get past that point to give me extra victory points. What's the point in me doing anything right now? And there is the sad. Uh, there is another game that we've done, and I can't remember which one it is. And you feel like the last. Like there's at least two moves here where. I think when you're 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 gaining resources, for example. Um, so here were your take a tile and place a tile. At the end of the game, if this is already full, you don't need those resources. It's also, it's you don't get anything yeah. for it. So you're playing a move because there's nothing else to do, and that just feels meh. Nah. Yeah. yeah. So I think they're my, they're the uglies for mm. for Cooper Island, and it's it's strange because we've. We've talked it down, and I don't feel like it's a game I won't play, and it's not no. a game that I don't enjoy. I do enjoy Cooper Island. I just feel like when it comes to a worker placement game with resource management, I'll pick something else first. Yeah, there are other options which give you a better feel-good vibe through the game. You don't. F the way I'd explain this game is wading through treacle, <laughs> yeah, fair. uphill... So like a treacle waterfall that you're trying yeah, to swim up. Yeah, that you're trying to swim up. And when you get to the top, that view that was promised is all cloudy. That's literally how I describe <laughs> it. Because you might enjoy the process of getting up there. Yeah, I'm working some muscles. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But actually, when I get to the top, was it really worth it? Yeah, I think that's fair, actually. And, and you know, if those clouds clear, yeah, that's great. But you're never sure if they're going to. And that's really how this game makes me feel. And I think it might be, because as I discussed earlier, the lack of emotional connection to the game. Because there's no story. It's a fantastic mechanics with a little bit of story just gently placed over the top. Yeah. And for me, I think that's why. I yep. think I don't have that problem, but I still get that wading through treacle feeling. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know what causes, but it's definitely a game that, well, like I say, don't avoid it. It's no. it's interesting to play. It's mechanically yeah. absolutely sound. Mm. It's a real challenge. And if you like a game that makes you feel like you've, you know, gone ten rounds with a heavyweight boxer, mm -hmm. um, this is the game. This is a game that you should buy. Yeah, absolutely. But if you want a, a he medium to heavyweight Euro game that offers Has a feel good factor, this is definitely not. It. It's not this game because those are the, those games are out there as yeah. well, and you know. If you don't like the meanness of this game, don't go for it. It's just not, it's not, you won't find pleasure in the time you spend with the game. So obviously at the start, we mentioned that we're doing the good, the bad and the ugly of Cooper Island. And because it's not a brand new game, we talked, said we're going to talk about the expansion. Now, the expansion is, I think, was it four? Five. Or five? five. Five single sheets of card. All Take the expansion, all the <laughs> five single sheets. <gasps> I've lost my house. Card. I think it was there. Um, the card. All the expansion it's not does. Even double sided. It's not even double sided. The expansion provides you a hint of asymmetry. Call the skill workers, and when you free up two of the workers, you get a, a benefit during the game, which is actually quite a useful benefit. But um, by the time you've actually released it, you probably don't need the benefit anyway. Yeah. So, for example, this one, when you release your first worker, 
gives you a discount in section F. So you go to the centre. Just to be clear, you don't need to release these workers in order. You can no, release you them don't. in any, any order you want. So this would mean that you'd use one less resource to either remove a ruin or, or place to ruin. Um, place a statue. Um, and this one... Um, yeah. yeah, it means you can play. So basically, they're all, they're all slightly different. But as I felt, like, to get that original worker out in the first place, if you're unlucky and you've just got the board that's, you know, relating to what you've just finished doing, oh, well, that's that's great. It's a difficult it's a difficult sell, the expansion. The expansion doesn't change the game. It barely, fancy. to be fair, it barely adds anything to the game as well, which is yeah. fine. Um, but it's I think they're yeah, doing more for game variants I would call it a promo rather than a, an yeah. expansion so overall the expansion doesn't change Cooper Island um, it gives you a little bit of variability at the start up mm. more replayability I, maybe yeah I, I would have rather seen some more of these cards as well like yeah, yeah give a some, bit more variability yeah. maybe some more objective cards just maybe a some bit different more variety so it's not yeah. always silk and gold if you're going to not build you could use your wood and stone to export. To export. Yeah. Why not? It's so, needed. <laughs> overall, Cooper Island is a fine game. Yeah. It's not a game we're going to rush to recommend, but it's not a game we'd avoid either. Um, listen I, to the caveats that we yeah. put out in this video. Yeah. And make a decision based on how you like to game. Yeah. I mean, as we've said, 40 minutes and we're three quarters of the way through a game. It doesn't have to be as heavy as... You know, it says in the box, if you can just have a bit of fun and you can just go bang, 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 bang you know, and just do it and be quite lighthearted with it, it's a good enough game for two players as well. Okay. So if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Do you agree with us? Maybe you think it's the best thing since sliced bread. Maybe you hate it. What are your opinions on this game? Comment below and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so just search for Leaders Full Pass. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, everyone. Bye See bye. you soon.